geometry students I miss you guys hope everyone's healthy and safe today we're finding the measure of missing angles and we're going to use inverse trig functions to do that our same functions and our same ratios are, are you know still hold true and we're going to apply those to the inverse when we use our regular trig functions we're looking the regular trig functions give us the length of these sides based on an angle measure we have to run that function backward and use inverse trig functions to find the angle based on the length of either uh, the opposite side and a hypotenuse or adjacent side and hypotenuse or opposite and adjacent sides just like the regular function the first thing we're going to do is let's label our triangle that's what we always should do first and our side that is furthest away from the right angle is, and the longest side, of course, is our hypotenuse. So I'm going to write HYP. This is my angle I'm working with. So I'm going to circle that. Uh, and now let's label the side that is the furthest away. Furthest away from my reference angle is, of course, my opposite. And then the side closest to my reference angle is my ADJ or adjacent. I have no value for my adjacent and I have no variable for my adjacent. So I can't use any trig function that has adjacent in it. I can only use the trig functions that have opposite and hypotenuse. And if you look at your three trig functions and you pick which one has opposite and hypotenuse, you'll find out or remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we're going to set this up in our normal equation like we've been doing. Only this time, we're going to use the inverse sign. The inverse sign, the key on your calculator, is going to look like this. Sine negative 1. It looks like sine to the power of negative 1. Uh, in a sense, that's not exactly inaccurate. But we're just going to call this inverse sign. Here's regular sign, and here's inverse sign. I'll show you on the calculator when the time comes how to use the inverse sign. Let's first set up our equation like we've been doing. We're using sign. Let me write our equation. Sign of some angle. Well, we usually have a number in here, but now we just have an x because we don't know the angle. Sign of some angle x out there that we don't know has the opposite side of 31 over the hypotenuse of 39. There's our equation. Well, what do we do? Well, we can use inverse sine and put this fact, this ratio in, and the inverse sign will tell us there's only one angle that has a sine ratio of 31 over 39, and here it is. So we would rewrite our equation like this. X equals the inverse sine of 31 over 39. And let's solve for X. That's going to be degrees. I'm going to show you on an iPhone calculator how to do that. And here's my calculator. I'm going to turn it horizontal to get my scientific calculator because I, it seems like that's what most people are using. <laughs> So here is my inverse calculator. Now I want to find sine, inverse sine of 31 over 39 and here's how I put that in. I find, I put in 31 divided by 39. I need to turn this into a, a decimal first, okay, equals sine inverse, x degrees equals sine inverse of some number. So I'm going to go, I'm going to put in my calculator. 31 divided by 39 and that gives me this number here. I'm going to round to four decimal places. 0.7948 with the 7 following will be 0 0.7949. 0 0.7949. We always carry it out to four decimal places and you can see um, how I got that. So now to get the, the actual angle I just put this key in, it's inverse sine of that, press equals, and I'm good to go. But how do I find inverse sine? Well, normally down here, you would have sine, cosine, and tangent. 
And we don't want to mess with these. These are not ones we want to mess with. That's something different. Those are hyperbolic. We need inverse. We press the second button. There's, see this button here on our calculator says second. And now you notice that my sine, cosine, and tangent changed to the inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent. So we're ready to go. We're going to hit the inverse sine key right here. Actually, first, we would just simply, we have our value in the calculator already. So all we have to do to take the inverse sine of this number is press the inverse sine key. And you'll see it switches to x degrees equals 52.64 degrees. 52.64 degrees. Okay. You can rewind and, and watch the video again if, if I'm going too fast here. I'm going to set the calculator to the side and I'm going to show you, well, we solved for this ain't missing angle. Let's look, it says in triangle NOP, the measure of P is 90, measure of OP, this side is 31 feet, and the measure of NO, which is the hypotenuse, is 39 feet. Find the measure of angle N to the nearest tenth of a degree. So we just want to round off to the nearest tenth. The four, we look at the digit next, the four is less than five, so this would remain 52.6. So the answer you would actually put in Delta Math is 52.6, 52.6. And that's how you find an angle, a missing angle in these triangles. Now, if, if you need to, you want the, the key step here is to make sure that you have the right trig function. So I'm going to end this video and I'm going to do another video that instead of using inverse sine it uses some other inverse function and I'll give you another example.